Welcome to Zero Bad Ideas. This is Jason. It's day, I don't know what number, of my new Unreal Engine project, which is to recreate digitally the card game Valyria Card Kingdoms, just because I wanted to do it. Um, so I just wanted to give a little overview of... Here, move back there. Of what it's doing now. So this is running as two clients. I should be testing as a server and a client, but right now I'm testing as two clients. Um, either player can go to the options menu. The game is, there's 10 cards and there's some monsters you fight, so you can customize what uh, characters you get and also what monsters you get. You also notice there's, if you don't select five, you get an error message there. When I hit back, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything. That's not a separate menu. That's still like the title screen menu. So when I hit play, it commits all that information. So you can see I've got the monk, I've got the mercenary. If I go up here, uh, I don't have the hills monsters, which was the first area, or the second one, which was... Hmm, I can't think of what the second area is now. And even if this player goes in here... No, yeah, it's not designed to be a small window. Uh, even if I came in here... Oh, barons, that's right. And change th things in here, it won't uh, affect this player. Uh, because hitting play only sets everything up one time. The next time someone hits play, it, it goes, oh, everything already exists. Uh, I don't need to do anything. It assigns player names. So it determines a random player order based on the list of all players. This player got named player one, this player's player two. You can see in the scoreboard here, we've got player one, player two, starting resources. You don't actually get 50 strength to start, but that's just for uh, testing purposes. Um, and you'll see everyone's uh, board is the same. So if we go down here to the domains, those are also all the same. Uh, the ones that you can't see are face down, that's on purpose, you don't have to know what comes next. Whereas the monsters are uh, organized by uh, rank, the tougher towards the top. And it also assigned one player to be the first player. I really need to put something on the screen when you're the active player. Because only one player can control the game. It's not that one, it's this one. So one player changes to the role phase, it changes for both players, it shifts, this player can freely go back and forth, but it moves into the role phase. Only the active player gets to roll dice, but they show up for both players. If we had uh, owned these cards, we would be able to activate them in the harvest phase, but because we don't own any of these, we get a free resource of our choice. So this player's going to pick blue, this one's going to pick yellow. You see this little animation sort of like glows when you uh, make your selection. In the action phase, you get two actions. Right now, there's, I think it's set to like 50 actions, so I can buy a monk, for example. You see there's now only four available. There's normally five. This player also knows there's four available. Uh, I could go up here and kill a monster if I want to, and kill his owlbear. You'll see that this character no longer shows that owlbear being there, but this player has an owlbear and they're killed monsters. No built domains, but they've got a monk, a knight, and a peasant, whereas this player only has a peasant, a knight, and no monsters or domains. However, for testing purposes, uh, I've got these two buttons here, and this one, I think, steals a monster... Sorry. It gives you the steal widget, uh, which would come up based on certain domains that let you steal. There's, there's a thief card that lets you steal. So clicking this uh, steals a random monster from this player. He's only got one, the owlbear. So, oops, didn't know that was still there. He no longer has the, the owlbear, and this player does have the owlbear because he stole it. Uh, and then on the other hand, this button, just for testing purposes, steals one gold. So uh, this player here has three gold, this player has zero gold because he bought a monk. So if I click this, again, didn't realize that breakpoint still there. No, I'm going to remove that. And. Nope. Don't mind both of those. And resume. Uh, oh, that's weird. I just changed how the button works. I bet I messed it up. Does it work for you? No, and it shouldn't. Because So the way that it should work is I click steal. This player gets told, hey, I'm stealing one gold from you. And it it determines if it has one gold to be stolen. If it does, then it 
sends a, a notification back to this player to say, hey, yes, you have stolen one gold. And uh, and then they do the same thing with monsters. They, they each handle their own situation. I don't know why it's not actually doing it, which is weird. And then at the end of this player's turn, no, sorry, this player's turn, it passes to this player. Now this player is the active player, so they can go to roll phase, they can roll. Now we are a knight, so in the harvest phase, the active player harvests the left side, which in this case is the same, and the inactive player gets the right side. Uh, although you can see in something like the monk, the active player would get a gold and two magic, whereas the inactive player would could pay a gold to get two magic, um, which does work. It all it's all functional. Um, and this player can do their own action phase, etc. Buy a domain, uh, for example. Um, this one here. Gain five strength and kill a monster. So if I build this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't build it. A, I don't have enough gold, and B, I don't have the citizens. You have to have citizens of this type to build it, which you can see right here. If you go to your own citizens, I have. Sorry to see on that one. I have no own citizens. Okay, that's wrong. This is a holy citizen. Okay, so that's broken too. This might not actually be <laughs> functional now that I think about it, but it should it should say one holy citizen. The, the initial peasant and the initial knight don't count as symbols, but. I have have that card there, so that's just a, a visual error. And then in theory, uh, if I could afford it, which I can't, uh, if I bought out two stacks of citizens times the number of players, so in this case four, or every monster was killed by any number of players, or all the domains were built by any number of players, the game would end at the end of that player's uh, action phase. The scoreboard would come up with final scores, and that'd be that. So for some reason, I gave myself... <laughs> I bet I, split, I tried to give myself money, and I gave myself victory points instead. So it would show you victory points. It shows you how many citizens everyone has. So this player one has a monk, and player two does not have anything except the, the initial two cards. So everything is replicated on all players. Everyone knows what everyone has. Uh, I mean, you can't see what monsters or domains that someone has, but it's not really relevant. And honestly, it's difficult enough to get to show uh, on your, your own. You'll notice that the citizens match the layout of the citizens, and the monsters match the layout of the monsters. The domains, because there's no rhyme or reason to how they're structured, like the monsters actually exist in columns for a reason, the domains are just random, so they, just get, they would get displayed here in the order they were built. Um, and then you can click on them, and you can see what, they, what they're doing for you. Um, and yeah, uh, and all the domain, almost all the domains function. So like this one here, during your roll phase, lets you change a die. That works when uh, I can't demonstrate it to you right this second. But um, when you click roll, a little box shows up here that lets gives you dice modification. There's you can set a die to minus one or to one. You can set a die to six. You can subtract one off the die. You also uh, one of the domains gives you a, a gold or a, sorry victory point. If the dice match, that works too. Uh, it also works if someone changes the dice. So anytime the dice are the same, because the modifications are rolling, you get a, you get a victory point. Literally everything works except a couple domains. Uh, the what was it that didn't work? Now I've forgotten. <laughs> um. I'll have to rewatch this, see what didn't work. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm extremely pleased. Uh, the stealing I just worked out in the last hour, uh, it's been complicated. I haven't tested it by clicking a domain, but in theory, like this guy here, uh, immediately take a random monster from a player. Clicking this would show me the steal widget and be activated for a monster steal. Um, and yeah. Uh, I'd say I'm pretty much, leaning on my microphone there, pretty much almost done, and I'm really happy with it. So thanks for joining me for this little walkthrough of uh, what it does, and hopefully I'll have a fully finished game that I can do basically nothing with, because I don't own any of the, I mean, I own the, I own the cards, I bought the print and play file for this game, but I don't own the game itself, so 
uh, it's just a portfolio project, project, I guess, but one I am very pleased with, given that uh, a very short time ago I did, could not have done any of this in Unreal Engine, and I'm very excited to learn more and, and make more complicated things. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Oh, my camera's up there, isn't it? Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.